Hey students, this week we are going to be using uh, our hands to come up with a template to do all of these different patterns and designs on our hands. Uh, we're going to use a lot of our colored pencils techniques that we've been using throughout the school year and come up with some creative ways that maybe we can input geometric shapes and something smooth and organic um, kind of floral. So we're going to use a lot of our elements of art that we've already been studying. Our element of shape, our element of line, color, space, possibly even some texture, and a lot of those colored pencil techniques that I already talked to you about, about um, fading borders and coloring and layers and blending. Lots and lots of blending. So grab your sketchbooks, your colored pencils, uh, a black marker would be great, or a really dark black pen, something like that, that's like um, maybe a little bit thicker. And come back and sit down, possibly coffee too. Teachers love coffee, you know I love coffee, and we'll get started. Okay, so using your hand, you are going to trace out uh, your hand on the paper. You want to push your fingertips up towards the top of the paper so that you get a little bit of your arm on that. And I already did that. Um, I have a sample that I have done before with this, and you can see how I did um, the element of line, curving line. We have the geometric shaped lines here. We have dots and a um, little bit of a chevron design, kind of floral design and leaf designs and all that kind of stuff all around. So what I say to start with is something that is kind of the overall feel for your entire hand. I base that off of this basic motion here. It's kind of curved shape and then this flower design. And then I was able to kind of fill out with more intricate details and kind of patterns that kind of wrapped around that central design. So I did the same thing this time, but I did more of a leafy pattern. And we are gonna go around all of those shapes now after you get your basic smooth lines out there. And this is all in pencil to begin with, so you don't have to worry about if you make a mistake, you can just erase it. You're gonna end up going over the image in ink and then colored pencils, so you don't have to worry about um, getting it perfect the first time. But get your, your main focal point out on your hand, and it can be something geometric, it can be like mine is here, the organic shape, we talked about that in the elements of art already this year. <clears throat> and then following another pattern that kind of comes up next to it. So I'm going to go with this line that I kind of had floating to the side of it. And I'm going to do maybe something like a rope.
Okay, so now I have a basic layout of a design that I want. And you'll see that I, I changed what I wanted to do in the middle of it. There was some um, different decorations that I switched out and I decided as I was working out that I wanted to move those around and that's totally fine. Um, I have some lines, some pencil lines I did not erase and that's because I'm going to use those as guidelines that I don't want them actually inked in. I just want them to be there to kind of give me this kind of flowy look in the background um, as I do my hand with my colored pencils. So before we dive into actually utilizing our colored pencils on this composition, I want to do a little bit of a refresher um, on some of those colored pencil techniques. Okay, so when we're blending two different colors together, um, I will do an orange and a green. Actually, I'll make it easier for you and I'll do two different colors that are closely the same. Two greens. As I'm blending them together, we want to think of um, this space being divided into thirds. So two thirds of it is gonna be one colored pencil coming across and the other two thirds is going to be the other colored pencil coming across. Now where they come together in the middle both colored pencils are going to get lighter so they're going to have more saturation on either side and as they come across they are going to fade and you're going to just kind of keep doing that in layers um, pulling up your your pressure so holding that pencil flat to the page on one side and coming across towards the other side so that it fades out and you see how essentially that is a value change a fading value change and we're gonna do it on the other side as well. I'm softening my pressure as I go across. I can come back. If I'm trying to get those corners, it's okay to go back into your pencil being more upright so that you can get the edges nice and clean. and then come back in, making sure your pencil's flat to the page, and you're gonna just fade that color two thirds of the way across as well. Now here in the middle, you get this midpoint where the two colors are coming together. And the more you want to soften that, the more layers you can do. Um, you can deepen the edges a little bit more. And if you really want to add a little bit of um, blending to it. You can also put like a another color in there, another mid-tone color if you feel like it. Um, but this practice that we did on this uh, practice quiz was just to see how you are fading the colors from one side to the next, letting them transition from one to the other. And then you can utilize that like on this hand where I had the petals fading from this dark to this light. And I actually did do three tones of pink fading out there. And you can see I did green here. Again, I did three. I had a light green, a mid-tone green, and a dark green. But the same concept of the colors coming and overlapping each other in the middle is what's happening. All right, then for your um, smoothness test, in order to get saturation, you don't have to jump straight to a burnish. I know we have a lot of you that love to color with a lot of saturation and so you jump straight to a burnish which is like this. And that's beautiful for certain parts of your art and to really add a lot of um, intensity and contrast to your composition. So you can have some parts that are really soft like this and then some parts that are really dark and what that's going to do is give that contrast and give it a little bit more depth but I would like to be able to see you saturate something without actually having to go all the way to that burnishing and not jump straight to the burnishing. I'll use my other pencil. And so we start with what we call the um, fading border, where you go right around the edge, you're holding your pencil more upright, you're making sure you're getting that line that you really want 
nice and clean. You're not going outside of the lines and you're also not haloing. Which would look a whole lot more like when you're coloring like this and you're kind of afraid to go up to the edges. So you see this white space around where you're coloring, that's your haloing. So we're gonna avoid doing that haloing by giving this nice smooth edge first. And then we start to color inward and we are lightening our pressure as we're coming in. So you see, essentially there's another value change, just like what we would do down here, this value test, where you are having it nice and dark on the edge and then it's softening and fading as it's going inward. What that's gonna do is allow you to disguise where that edge is. So when you're coming back and you're looking at this, you're not gonna necessarily see, oh, she outlined that or he outlined that. But you'll see that it's kind of fading off into the center. Now we can come in with coloring in our layers. And remember when I said when we color in layers, we do it um, light and going all one direction, then we switch our direction and we go back over top of everything that we colored. So we're not doing layer different directions side by side, but they're literally layering on top of each other. So going side to side, notice my pencil is flat to the page. So I'm getting a whole lot more of the side of that lead touching the page. I'm not coloring straight up and down like this where you're actually going to see all of the color lines. And then if you color in layers over top of that, you're just gonna kind of get more of like this almost textured look, which is great if you were wanting that texture, but in an area where you want it to be, so don't want that. So now I've gone up and down on this. Now I'm gonna go um, across, holding my pencil way far back at the end and going across. And because I did my fading border, even though I am essentially doing this same thing, you don't see it as much because I already have a fading border there to disguise that and to minimize any of that. I can come back in and soften if I need to, if there's some spots that I feel like I didn't really get. And then I'm gonna come back in with another layer and completely different direction again, side to side. And you can see I'm getting full saturation without having to jump to a burnish. You can't see where my color lines are and I'm not getting any haloing, which is exactly what you want when you're getting that nice coverage over your composition. And the fading value test, this is exactly like what this was up here. I'll do it again where you just have it really dark on one side. And again, kind of think of this space as um, divided up into thirds and so it's just fading off. You're going to have a lot of saturation on that first third transitioning into your second third and then by your third it will just be super soft going up to nothing like that. Alright so we've refreshed on those techniques now you're going to bring those over and you're going to use them in your composition. Um, before you start coloring, stop and think about your element of color. Remember we talked about how yellow is the first color that the eye sees. And so anything that you make yellow is going to um, really catch your eye. And so if we think of the rule of thirds, even though we used to divide up into thirds on the composition, um, also anything that's divided up into three. So if you want one single focal point, you could make it the brightest color right in the center, your yellow, your reds. Or if you wanted to kind of disperse that, like I have these three flowers, I could do those yellow and it would kind of make those kind of like a floating um, focal point, but it's kind of dispersed throughout the composition and there's three of them. I could make it warm and cool I could do it all uh, monochromatic and all different tones of one kind of color, like all green. So think about kind of what you're wanting to do with your color 
mentally before you start laying it out and then dive in and go ahead and do that. Now I've been wanting to mix some elements here of some metals. I think I'm gonna make this in here wood and then this watery surface in the background and then my green um, leaves in the center and then there's rope. So I'm gonna kind of try to get all of those different textures and elements brought in as I'm coloring this. All right, so this should give you a really good idea of um, a way to get started on all of this and ways that you can tie in some of your colors, some of your elements. Um, I have the, the rope that I put in there, the wood, um, some of the metal, I brought some of the metal down here as well. The greens mixing complementary colors, um, colors opposite of each other on the color wheel will give you really good shadows so I did that a little bit on these leaves. Um, obviously the complementary color of green is red and so I did a red brown and that kind of gave it more of that um, earthy tone and you could keep blending and keep doing that. I'm going to keep working with this as well. 
but I love the idea of you guys being able to just use your hand as your canvas, the outline of your hand as your canvas, and then seeing all of the different elements and designs and textures and patterns that you can implement on that surface. Um, go ahead and finish them up and then send pictures of them to me when you are done. I can't wait to see them. You guys have a good week. Bye.